that was here last week, so they might have not got up out of bed early. So God bless you for being here. We're going to open up this morning with a word of prayer and ask God just to have His way. And His blessings will just fall upon you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank You for all the things that You've done in our lives so far. I thank You, God, that You've got everything under control, Father, even when things look like they're not. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, Father, that You'll bless every soul that's come out to this slab. God, that You'll move in their lives in a mighty way. For those, God, that are viewing us through YouTube or some other means, God, I ask that You'd bless them as well. So many things, God, that we don't understand, but we do understand that You love us and care for us. So bless this day, in Jesus' name, Amen. We'll let our worship team take over. God bless you. Well, good morning. Good morning. Happy Mother's Day. Yes. So, to my mom, I just want to shout out. I appreciate you. I love you. Where are you at? She's right there. Oh, I see you now. I love you, mommy. So I'm going to recite the shortest Mother's Day poem ever. You're my mother. I would have no other. <laughs> And so, on this Mother's Day, we want to sing to you mothers that you're a good, good mama. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. All right, so are you guys ready to worship? Yeah. I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like But I've heard the tender whispers of love In the dead of night And you tell me that you're pleased And that I'm never alone Cause you're a good, good father who you are who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. Oh, and I've seen many searching for answers far and wide, but I know we're all searching for answers only you provide because you know just what we need before we say a word you're a good good father it's who you are it's who you are it's who you are and i'm loved by you it's who i am it's who i am it's who I am, you're a good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. Cause you are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. Cause you're a good, good father to you are. It's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. Oh, love so undeniable, I, I can hardly speak. Peace so unexplainable I 
I can hardly think as you call me Deeper still as you call me Deeper still as you call me Deeper still into love Love, love, you're a good, good father It's who you are It's who you are It's who you are And I'm loved by you Good, good
longer a slave to fear I am a child of God Praise God!
looking all your glory Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. I reckon I'll get it right here one of these Sundays. Boy, what a beautiful day, huh? Yes, I can. No sun out there. The clouds has got us covered. No rain. Everything is beautiful. Amen. And you guys are awesome. I didn't get an amen to that one, did I? <laughs> All right. Well, I'm awesome. So I know that you are too. I just, I just appreciate what God is doing. Uh, just give me one moment here. Sharon, have you got your readers with you? I didn't. Okay. I'll make out. Here comes Kim to the rescue. They might be a little dirty, but they're not scratched. These are them auto darkening glasses, and I don't need the dark. Ah, thank you, Ken. That's awesome. All right. I would too like to say Happy Mother's Day, and I actually got a, a Mother's Day message for you today, but it's a different kind of Mother's Day message. And uh, it's going to sound a little bit depressing in the beginning, but hang in because the end is always better than the beginning. It's sort of like our lives. Our lives, as we progress in God, gets better and better. So my life right now is better than it was when I first got saved. I've learned a lot of valuable lessons, and God has just uh, helped build my faith, and I appreciate Him so much. Most Mother's Day's uh, messages focus on how nice mothers are and how good that they have it. But mothers in the real world don't have it made. Some are abused by their spouses. Some are misused by their children. Some have their hearts broken and by trials and tribulations. They have fought sickness and disease for themselves and their family. They go without so that their children can have. And so this morning, I'm going to bring this message to you about real mothers, not the kind that we want to think about as sitting on the pedestal, but the ones that's down in the trenches fighting the good fight of faith. And, uh, and I, I appreciate the mothers. I really do. And I'm going to take you to Genesis 4, 1 and 2. And this is the very first mother on planet Earth. Her name is Eve. It says, and Adam, and Adam knew Eve his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man-child from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of the sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. Now that's the only scripture I'm going to I'm not, we all know the story of Cain and Abel. Uh, one of the most wonderful things that can happen to a woman is to become a mother. And here Eve has given birth to two sons. You can almost hear the excitement in her voice as she proclaims the Lord has given her a man child. And uh, she was no doubt just real proud of, of these boys. She must have seen them grow up and start providing for themselves, growing to the young men. Now, if it starts to rain, I see a couple of drops that's dropping here. You all can head for your cars and I'll back up. But uh, we'll just pray that it don't rain. So she must she must have uh, been real proud of him. And motherhood has had put her to the test, though. All of a sudden, as her boys grew, there was a contention between them, jealousy. 
And we know that when Cain killed Abel, it had to have broke her heart. I guarantee you she mourned probably for her sons until the day she died. But even though she lost her youngest son to death, she also lost her oldest son because Cain ended up in exile for the rest of his life. What a horrible load for her to have to carry. But I'm, I got good news for you. I, it don't end there. Trials and tribulations, pain and heartache don't last forever. I mean, there's things that happen in your life you're going to remember forever. But I can tell you this, God is going to take care of whatever the problem is in your life. In Psalms 139, 1 through 18, I'm going to be reading this. And we know the psalmist, he had a broken heart. There's, there's a lot of things that happened to David. And so he was acquainted with sorrows and grief with his own children that had turned against him. He had uh, the king turned against him. He was in exile. He was uh, David just had a messed up life. But this is what he says, O oh Lord, you have examined my heart and know everything about me. I'm going to take this real slow. There's not a person sitting here today that God don't know everything about you. Isn't it funny how we try to hide things from God and even hide things from ourselves? But God knows everything. It says, You know when I sit down or stand up. You know my thoughts even when I'm far away. You see me when I travel and rest at home. You know everything I do. You know what I am going to say even before I say it. Wow! For those of you mothers that have raised more than one child especially, you almost know exactly what your children are going to say before they even say it. And God knows us better then we know our own children. He knows us so intimately, the Bible declares that every hair on our head are numbered. Uh, Brother Hogan used to say God had to have one angel keep track of all the hairs on his head because he lost them so quickly. So, and I'm not far behind him, but you know what? This is the way God created me. I'm not going to wear uh, a wig. I'm just going to Keep what I got and be happy with it. Because my wife's happy, right, Sherry? Well, as long as she's happy, we can be happy, guys. He says, You see me when I travel and rest at home in everything that I do. In the fifth verse, it says, You go before me and follow me. You place your hand of blessing on my hand or on my head. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too great for me to understand. How can I escape from your spirit? I can never get away from your presence. How many remembers the story of Jonah? Tried to get away from the presence of God. Tried, tried to get away from the call. Tried to get away from uh, what God was wanting him to do. You can't hide from God. If He said that if you go to the lowest parts of the earth, God is there. If you rise up into the heavens, far above the earth, God is there. He's everywhere. So, you can't hide from Him. You can live your life the way that you want, but God is going to be every step of the journey with you. I, when I backslid on God, can I just talk to you from my heart this morning? When I backslid on God, I've done some terrible things. But God would still talk to me. I don't know why. When I was in the midst of doing things that was totally against Him, He would still talk to me. And I would still pray. I'd go to bed at night and I'd, I'd say, please don't come back. Don't let Jesus come back. I'm not ready. I would still pray, but I was, I was so messed up. But God was every step of the journey with me, even in my backslidden condition. He went to the hog waller with me. Because what does the Bible say? That He'll never leave you. 
If you go back into sin, God's going to be there with you all the way. Like super glue stuck to you. And you're going to remember the times that God has been there for you. The times that God has raised you up. The times that God has blessed you and helped you. So, David is saying, I can't get away from you, God. And I would like to say to the mothers this morning that have had heartaches, heartbreaks over your children, God knows exactly where you're at. He knows exactly what's going on in your children's life. He knows about your grandchildren, your future grandchildren, your great-grandchildren. God knows everything. And God's able to turn it around. I believe if I wasn't convinced that God wasn't able to turn it around, I would fold up my computer, I would go home and go back to work and do whatever I could to get rich. But I'm here to tell you, I am convinced that I know that God can turn it around. There's nothing to stop Him from working in your life, your children's life, your grandchildren's life. And God is, is faithful. So, He's saying, I could ask the darkness to hide me and the light around me to become night. But even in darkness, I cannot hide from you. To you the night shines as bright as day. Darkness and light are the same to you. You have made all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. You watch me as I was being formed in the utter seclusion as I was woven together in the dark of the womb. <laughs> what a God we serve. God knew you before you was born. He knew you as He's putting you together in your mother's womb. And He knows who you are right now. And not only that, He knows who you're going to become. That is so awesome. When I was walking in darkness, God knew that one day I was going to be walking in His light. God is a God that can reach down in the midst of any kind of mess. And there was a preacher here back several years ago preaching our camp meeting and he says, God can bless your mess. Remember that sermon? How many have ever been in a mess? Some of y'all is in a mess right now. But that's alright. God can bless that mess. If He can't, we might as well pack up and ride our ponies home. Because I'm going to tell you, if God can't bless this mess, then, then He's not God. But God can reach down into the midst of whatever problem, whatever situation, whatever dark place that you're in, and bring light, and bring joy, and bring peace and happiness into your life oh, like only God can. You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. Isn't that awesome? Yes. So let me read that to you again. You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. God has given us all a destiny. Will we all fulfill it? No. But we can. That... That is the glorious part about God. Is He can take you where you're at right now. See, we can't change whatever's happened. You can't change the bad things that you've done. How many would like to change the bad things you've done? I could, if I had 10,000 hands, I'd raise them all. Yeah. I would love to change the bad things that I've done. But I can't. But I can be forgiven for them. Yeah. <laughs> they can be wiped clean. They can be put behind me and underneath the blood of the Lamb. I'm not going to let the devil trick me another day. I'm going to stand in the presence of God 
Am I going to make mistakes? You better believe I'm going to make mistakes. Are you? Maybe not. You're better than I am. I know. We're none of us good. The Bible says that. Jesus said that. None's good. No, not one. Only the Father. So, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to mess up. But the God of heaven, the God that created you in your mother's womb is the same God that's going to put your life together and make it alright from here on out. I can't change my past, but I can change my future. Because God has made it possible through His Son. So I'm giving you mothers hope this morning. I know there's mothers that have talked to me that is broken because they want to see their children do better. They want to see their children come to the knowledge of Christ. And I'm giving you hope this morning that that baby that was created in your womb, that little child that God was putting together in your womb, that is a precious gift from God. Sure, they may have gone astray, but that don't mean they can't come back. There is no point of, of non-return. God is he's better than Walmart. You can take anything you want back to Walmart and they'll accept that return, right? Well God, He don't even He don't even care if all the pieces and bits is there. I, I bought a TV because my TV uh, went out and I took it back and they took it all apart out of the box to make sure even all the little screws was there. I thought, God, thank you for letting me put all them little screws back. Because I wouldn't have been able to get my money back. So they make sure all the bits and the pieces are, are there before they take things back. But God accepts you broken, messed up, with all the broken pieces, all the missing pieces, and He's able to recreate you into His image. Recreate you into what God has called you to be. He's called you to be more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. And it's time that the church of the living God realizes that there's power in Christ yeah. to bring us into the resurrection power of Him. He has created you a brand new creature. All things have passed away. The Bible declares all things have become new. And there are so many people that have been hurt in the church world because they feel like they've been looked down on. I'll tell you what, I hope to God that our church never does that. Because we was just as pitiful and miserable as the lowest drug addict out there. And God fixed us. Let's remember what God has done for us and know that He's wanting to do it for others. He goes on to say, How precious are your thoughts about me, God. They cannot be numbered. God's thoughts about us cannot be numbered. I can't even count them. They outnumber the grains of the sand. And when I wake up, you are still with me. That is the most precious part of that Scripture to me. When I wake up, God is still with me. Does that mean when I wake up and have done everything right, God is still with me? No. God is still with me even when I've done the wrong. He's trying to reach us. There's a lot of prodigals out there, church that have been injured and wounded and hurt. There's a lot of prodigal children out there that mothers and fathers are weeping and crying for and begging God to, to somehow reach them. And God is able to take those people that everybody else has thrown away. He said, what's the use? Put them back together again and make them something special. I don't know about you, but that's the kind of God that I serve. I serve a God of restoration, a God of forgiveness, a God of love, a God of mercy and grace. There's going to be judgment today one day, I know that. But right now we're living in the grace dispensation and God has got His mercy hand stretched out saying, I know you've fallen into the gutter, but I'm here to pick you up and to dust you off and to clean you up and to make you whole again. 
That's the kind of God that you and I serve. We are not serving a God that is looking to destroy us. We're serving a God that's yeah. looking to restore us. To make us whole. What a God. I don't know about you, but I'm about to get goosebumps. I know I'm going to get out of the picture frame. That's okay. Till, when I started thinking about that scripture, when you was being formed in your mama's belly, I thought, wow, God already knew who you was going to become. He already knew who my oldest son was going to become and who my daughter was going to become. He already knew. Sure, we've suffered disappointments, but I guarantee you that God is on their trail. He's not willing that any should perish, but all come to the everlasting knowledge of yeah. Jesus Christ. He's on your side. He's not against us. He's for us. He looks down into our hearts and He sees the deep, dark secrets and the pain that we've had and had suffered. And God is one to help us with those things. The devil is saying to you, God don't care about you. You've messed up too bad. There's nothing that you can do to fix it. And I guarantee you He's right about that. There's nothing that you can do to fix it. But God is going to fix it for you. The only thing that we can do is submit to Him. What, what a loving God. Tim, can you guys go back to the music? I, I know I haven't been doing this. But I'm going to tell you, there is such a presence of God on this lap this morning. Yes. During worship, I felt like I was going to another place. It wasn't just the goosebumps. I, I felt numb all over. When I, when I opened up my eyes and come to myself, I seen Jesse over there dancing on the slab, and I thought, oh, she's in the spirit. But she was swatting off the bugs. <laughs> if there's a bug anywhere in Florida, it's going to jump on her. <laughs> so she is our... Uh, our bug deterrent when we go out and sit outside. We take her along with us. I'm so glad that you you come this morning. And as they play something, I want you just to bow your heads for a moment. Now you know me. I don't embarrass people and ask you to come up and pray. And you're welcome to do that. But if, if you're here this morning and God is dealing with you in a way that you need to release yourself to Him. I just want you to slip your hand up to heaven. I won't drag you up, I promise. Just slip your hand up. Thank you for that hand. Thank you for those hands. Anybody else? Okay. I'm here to tell you this morning, God sees your hands. He sees your heart. Holy God. Holy God. As they sing this song, Father, I want You just to move, Father. There's some here that haven't raised their hands, Lord. That's okay. You see the heart. I'm asking God that You would help repair the breaches, God, that is in the walls, Father, that has been torn down. Help us, Father, to become whole again. Holy God. Holy God, Holy God, we worship you, Lord. You are here, Lord. Working in this place, I worship you. I worship you. You are here. I worship you. I worship you. Father, I thank you, you for your spirit. Touch the inward parts, Father. Help us, God, I wish to release every section, I wish every molecule of our being. You are a miracle worker, promise keeper. In the darkness, my God, that is 
darkness, my God, that is who you are.